Stream processing is a term that groups together the collection, integration and analysis of unbounded data. First we're going to talk about the characteristics of the data that stream processing systems are built to handle. So there's two main types of data. We've got bounded data and unbounded data. Bounded data is finite, it has a discrete beginning and end. Um, really this is any data that you store in a kind of a transactional database. Uh, it's associated with batch processing. An example would be uh, point of sale data in a shop. Whenever you uh, make a purchase in a shop, that data will be stored in a database. And then maybe at the end of the day, end of the week, even quarterly, a batch process will run against that database and generate reports to stake for stakeholders to review. Unbounded data is infinite. It has no discrete beginning or end. And this type of data is associated with stream processing. An example would be um, an air quality sensor. Let's say a sensor is recording uh, a data point every second. So over a year, you know, this sensor is recording data 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. There's no beginning and end. Uh, and so this is the kind of differentiation between these two. So let's have a look at the characteristics of what one of these unbounded data streams might look like. So your stream processing software needs to be able to handle all of these points. First, we've got small data records, so often JSON, XML, or e even CSV fragments. So you've got, they're small in size, but there can be huge volumes of them. And when summed up over a large period of time, the actual data storage volumes can be significant. Data volumes can also be extremely high. Um, you can get low volume data streams, but if they're low volume um, consistently, then they're often handled by complex event processing tools rather than stream processing. Stream processing are focused on streams that at some point have a high volume. Data distribution uh, can be inconsistent as well. So, you know, you might be record recording, let's say, the location of vehicles. Well, during the night, you might have very few data points coming in, but then during rush hour, you might get a surge of data. So your infrastructure and your software has to be able to handle these bursts and these busy periods. But on the flip side, it also needs to be able to handle the quiet periods. You don't want to be overpaying for software and hardware during these quiet periods. Data can also arrive out of sequence. Um, network issues, um, you know, hardware downtime, it can cause the data to arrive late in your infrastructure. Your stream processing tooling needs to be able to handle this data arriving out of order and deal with it. So here's some common event streams. Enterprises really have been engulfed by a growing volume of streaming data now, and you can see there's a huge variety of sources. I think one key thing to, to, to note as well is location is playing an increasingly larger role. Um, GPS chips are now extremely prevalent. They're much, much cheaper. So again, your stream processing system, it should be able to handle uh, data with a location element and it should be able to analyze and process that data in an intelligent way. So historical transaction data is still important, but really this all of the discussion around big data, it really consists mainly of streams of observable events from, from one of these event sources. This is an overview of the difference between batch processing and stream processing. So I'll pull a few things out here. The first thing to note is that with stream processing, the jobs must be running continuously that process the data. And those jobs that are running continuously, they must be able to produce constant results. Obviously, if it's streams running 365 days a year, you can't have a period of time where your stream processing framework is not listening because you may lose data. Whereas with batch processing, you're running in frequent jobs that produce results once the job has finished running. The other thing in the last row there, uh, with batch processing, you're processing the data after storing the data. So this enables you to do very complex analysis because the data stored in a database, you can pull out specific parts of that data to do analysis on them in memory and then save the data back. With stream processing, you're processing the data before it's been stored to a, to a data store. So you're processing in memory and then maybe you're storing the data. 
So again, you're dealing with larger volumes here, but you you also um, it limits the type of analysis you can do. Uh, it must be simpler because this continually running job makes it harder to do very very complex analysis. Often with analysis, um, you you window the data, so that's how you split the data up for analysis. You window it based on time, and then you can group the data and do some simple analysis on it. So these are the type of analysis we see people doing on stream when working with streaming data. Uh, we've got three main groups here. The first group is filtering and aggregating. So this is all about reducing data volume. Uh, so you might filter data out based on an attribute, or you might group data together. For example, you may have an air quality sensor logging uh, data every second. What you could do is build a workflow that aggregates that data over a minute, takes an average, so then rather than saving every point to the database, you're just saving one point every 60 seconds. Enriching the data is another common workflow. Obviously, often data coming from a stream is, is very raw and basic. It might have an ID, it might have a timestamp, it might have one value attribute. So you might want to join that data to an external database or API, enrich that data in memory before storing it to disk. You've also then got event detection, and event detection is interesting because often with event detection, you might not even store the data uh, at all in a database. You might just in memory look for patterns against that data and once you can identify a pattern you trigger a downstream process or notification to, to a stakeholder. So in conclusion stream processing it's really been a game changer and it allows organizations to deliver insights across massive data sets on a continuous basis.